Hey everyone, Deltron here. Welcome to the start of my playthrough of Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition. So last time we stopped on the HD edition of Age of Empires 2, I had stopped on the Forgotten campaigns. I had just started them, I believe. But since the Definitive Edition, some of the campaigns were, were changed, there's some slight changes that I am told. I've, and it's also been a while since I played I'm just going to start over William Wallace, Age of Kings campaign. The learning campaign. The Warriors of Scotland attempt to hold off an invasion of the better equipped English armies. Learn the basic concepts of Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition. See? It's brand new, guys. Such as building an economy, training your soldiers, and most importantly, fighting and defending your... defeating your enemy. If you are new to, to real-time strategy, you're not defending your enemy. <laughs> if you're new to real-time strategy games, you will learn all that you need to know. If you have played the original Age of Empires game, you can skip ahead to more advanced features such as collecting relics and siegecraft. In this campaign, you will play as assaults. Let's get started. So I did open um, the first mission, just go through it to kind of play with the settings, but I, uh, like I did on Age of Empires 2 HD, I'm gonna just play on moderate, marching and fighting. Let's get going. We are without a leader. The dead king of Scotland has no heir. War creeps in from the south, what Edward Longshanks, the avaricious king of England, has returned from successful campaigns in Wales and France. As Longshanks turns his attention to Scotland, the shadow of fear settles across the highlands. The English have thousands of Welsh longbowmen, hundreds of knights on horseback, and dozens of siege weapons. We Scottish have a rabble of untrained soldiers who do not even know how to march in a straight line. We must act soon. If we are to have any chance of resistance, we need to forge an army by any means necessary. So the narrator is new. It's a Scottish accent. I wonder if he's actually Scottish. Main objectives follow the instruction to reach the Scottish village. You can scroll through more of the map by moving your mouse. Okay, we know how to do that. Thank you very much. Road ahead leads to nearby, the nearby Scottish village. Okay, let's get going. Looks the very, very English are terrorizing all of Scotland, and it's time for us to fight back. But if we are to defeat them, Bargain. every one of us will need to learn how to march and fight. Follow the path to the blue flag. First, click the soldier. Good. Now right-click near the blue flag. Tall. Okay, so basic tutorial. I'm loving the look of this. The Good. definitive edition. Now move to the next flag. Click so the soldier, then right-click near the flag. Fear. So we can actually zoom in and out. So that's as far as we can zoom in. Excellent. Now to move to the next flag, you must walk through the black area. And then we can zoom out much Good. further than we could before. I mean, Tall. I don't believe we could zoom out. Zoom in or, Moving in or into out the black there. area oh. reveals more of the map. Oh. The black area represents unexplored territory. The fog of war. Oh. <laughs> That's all there is to it. Now go to the next flag, where you will meet some allied soldiers. Okay, and the user interface is definitely different. So we'll check this out when we. I see there's like two numbers for each of these items, the resources, and also for villagers. Okay, so that's the idle villager, Dark Age. Oh. So there were some changes oh, that I yeah. didn't make. So let's go ahead and let me show you that. Uh, I did open this first map up. So you can change the HUD scale. So I made that a little smaller and the tool sip scale, I made that as small as possible because it was pretty damn large. Also this readability panel. So there, if you check this, it'll show like a black screen behind it, but it just kind of got in the way since it's like right in your face. And there's a colorblind mode if you do have to deal with that. But with some other changes I disabled Enable Bloom. Just kind of, everything looks a little like washed out, like more washed out with the Bloom enabled. So I just went ahead and um, uncheck that. And also the Animate Fog. So if you have that, open the fog. Actually kind of <laughs> tries to resemble fog. It just kind of looks, I don't know, it kind of looks like creep. <laughs> Almost like Zerg creep. So I went ahead and turned that off as well so trying to think what other if any what other changes i made but yeah it looks really nice i mean this is a to move all your soldiers at once click near the units and drag around them. then right click to move them try moving your soldiers to the next flag this is a complete remaster of age of empires 2 and apparently there are also some quality of life changes like you can shift Did all your units commands. make it to the flag the road ahead is guarded by an English outpost. Scroll up to the outpost building by moving the mouse to the very top of the screen. Then click the red outpost. 
bit here. Tall. Like everything has been adjusted. The water, bit the here. terrain, Tall. the units. Right click the like, They look really, it. really good. Better than Warcraft Three Reforged. <laughs> Sorry for continuous hate on Warcraft Three Reforged. <laughs> it's an easy game to poke fun of right now. I'm hoping that Warcraft Three Reforged will. I mean, as, as time goes on, I think Activision and Blizzard just put a lot of pressure on their developers for it to get it out sooner rather than later, and they didn't really have time to implement a lot of the things they would have liked to implement with if they had enough. Uh, resources. Oh, the buildings collapse. First, that's really cool. The outpost is destroyed. That should slow the English raids. So yeah, everything Keep looks following the path to the village. Really, really, really good. I want to take this time also. It's like Tallinn's tree is F5. Learn kind of the hotkeys here. So we have Celts, Infantry, and Siege Civilization. Don't really need to worry about that right now. Let's see. Objectives is F6. Okay, it's good to know. I'm learning this. I, again, I, it's been a while since I played this game, so <laughs> kind of relearning everything. That's why I didn't want to just jump right back into the programming campaigns because those were pretty tricky. What is F4? Okay, F4 is like a quick save. F3 pauses. I remember that. Well, I don't remember the hockey, but I remember the pause. Ooh, I'm really liking the look of, of this. Yeah, so for. Sweet home. But wait. The English are angry that you destroyed their outpost. They're coming to attack the village. Don't panic. Just click your soldiers and right click the red see. English soldiers to attack. Defeat the enemy soldiers and you'll have won your first battle. You're gonna swing. Good job. Now you know how to fight back. HD blood the right there. Army. <laughs> English was defeated. Objectives follow the instructions. Awesome. That should be it. You are victorious. I like the victorious screen. Very, very cool. And then we could return to map and then we can continue on to the next one. Scotland has soldiers now, if only a few. But if we are to turn back the greed of Edward Longshanks, we'll need many more recruits and much more gold in our coffers. These ancient stones and oaks around us will soon be drenched with the blood of clansmen. Look at that, most valuable player, the winner. <laughs> I mean, they had nothing. I want to check. So it looks similar to the score screen in the previous version of this game. Very, very cool. Uh, return to map, play again, return to campaigns. That's what we want to do. We can move on to feeding the army. All right, let's get going. So I guess if you beat it on moderate, you get a silver, standard bronze, hard, you get a gold little check mark or a gold medal. That's pretty cool. An army marches on its stomach, or so the old saying goes. My clansmen have been farming and tending sheep for hundreds of years, but gathering enough food to feed an army is a different matter entirely. Without a strong economy, the meager forces that we have cobbled together will collapse again. Okay. Build an economy. Gather 50 food, 50 wood, and 50 gold. Villages can gather food, wood and gold and stone, and you will need to build building research technology to create soldiers. There are gold deposits to the northeast and southeast of your town center. Okay. To Four support the Scottish army, right, like the you will need to build up your stockpile of resources. To win, gather Gee, 50 guess. food, 50 wood, and 50 gold. Uh, we don't. We start with no resources. I like the animation. Very, very cool. Okay. The but, villager will continue working for you. Carrying the food to the town center. I remember H was the hockey to go to the town center. Air love. So, Kia. Oh, it shows like health bars for the <laughs> the bushes. Nice. How much are villagers? Fifty. The amount of food you have is shown in the upper left corner of the screen. In addition to your food stockpile, you can see your current wood, gold, and stone stockpiles. Oh, okay. So that the more villagers you have. The faster you can gather resources. Assign your new villagers to gather food. Oh, we'll put some on wood too, I guess. I mean, he's telling me to put on gold, so. So the number underneath the resource icon is the number of villagers you currently have assigned to gather that type of resource. So that's, that's neat. That's pretty neat. I like that a lot. Very, very cool. And I'm guessing the hotkeys, so the Q. Kid. Okay. 
I like it. I like it. Uh, I think the menu is... Yeah, F9 is a menu. Okay. So what else did I change? Not not a whole lot. I turned V-Sync on. Oh yeah, the enhanced graphics. There's a free download DLC that you can download to get this enhanced graphics. You can download it from the Steam Workshop. And I turned... Yeah, the volume I turned down. It's weird. I said it's 65 and it automatically went up. Went down 64 for some reason. And oh yeah, these are also new. So you can you can easy drag military. So if you drag and you have villagers in there, only select the military. That seems I don't know. It seems like it'd be more trouble than it's worth. And then right click garrison, so you can just right click instead of hitting Alt to go into the garrisons or uh, town centers or castles or something like that, which could be I don't know. It could be we'll we'll see how that goes. I turned that on, it was defaulted to off. So, so apparently I can shift Q uh, commands on villagers now. Great. You now have 50 foot to win. Also gather 50 wood and 50 gold. To gather wood, click a villager right, let's go and right click a tree. If you haven't found any gold yet, search in the unexplored territory. Good job. You now have enough wood. Okay. Oh, here's a good. You found some gold. And then how do I adjust the speed? It's on fast. It doesn't seem fast. It seems like normal. <laughs> like slow speed. Kia. Okay. I wonder if I if I sh and then shift Q here, he'll probably continue until all that wood is gone. I'm guessing. Bonage. Beat fear. Beat fear. Yeah. The gold looks good. Very fancy gold. <laughs> Got the lumberjacks. All right, so now yeah, it shows that we have five villagers on, on gold. Obviously, very cool. I wonder if we make another villager. No, we can't. We're supply capped at five. This is exciting stuff, guys. <laughs> very exciting. <laughs> that should be it. Excellent. You now have enough gold. All right, what objectives do we have? Oh, it's just, yeah. There's only one objective. You're well on your way to making a city. Am I? Am I now? Okay, let's go. Let's continue. Edward Longshanks, for all its disrepute, has shown his military tactics in Wales, England, and France to be very effective, if not cruel and ruthless. He is indeed an enemy to be feared. The English sacked the town of Berwick upon Tweed. With that, I could call it a battle, but it was truly more of a massacre. Unless we organize our army, there will be more massacres to follow. I pray that we can be ready when Longshanks comes. So I'm pretty sure those initial dialogues were never. Oh, we had no enemy there. We never narrated in the original game. Very cool. All right, let's return to campaigns and continue. Uh, we'll probably do one or two more, depending on how long it takes, and then I'll stop it for this video. Training the troops. In villages throughout the Highlands, there is grim talk of skirmishes between Scotland and England. We lost the town of Dunbar this week. Scottish defenders broke ranks and fled. The English have an army that is larger and better trained. To compete with them, we are going to need new recruits to pick up spear, sword, and bow. We must transform these shepherds into soldiers. I know the art for the narration is different. Train four militia. Very exciting. Always explore the map. <laughs> we have not heard from our scouts. They are probably lost in the woods. Ooh. We will need many soldiers to defend our homeland. To win, you will need to create four militia. We'll start by creating villagers. Click your town center. Then click the Create Villager button in the lower left corner of the screen. Right, I will do as he tells me. Ooh, it actually, like if you hover it over it, it takes time for the villager to appear. If your town center is selected, you can see the progress in the status area at the bottom of your screen. Yes. I also noticed that it shows on the top. Good job. That's the villager has appeared different. next to your town center. Now, create another villager. Alright, we 
We need more you need additional <laughs> housing to support your population. Vargara. To build a house, click a villager. All right. I clicked one. Click the buildings button. Click the build house button. Then click where you want to build the house. Like the foundation for it. Very nice. Not liking that we're next to a cemetery. If more than one villager builds a building, it will go up faster. I actually forgot about that. Or did I? Good job. Try building another house. Alright, build another house. I like the hockeys are just cute. Each house supports five units. The population indicator at the top of the screen shows your current and supportable population. Yeah, right here. Showing that we have five villagers. Ooh. Okay, so we, this shows we have idle villagers. Which I believe yeah, is kind of a period. Other buildings are made just like houses. Try building a barracks. Kid. The barracks is a military building. Alright, so barracks. Oh yeah, the foundations. That, I remember in the Age of Memories 2, all the foundations were the same. So now you can actually tell the building apart from the foundation. So yeah, there's a protection status, like if I build a villager, it'll show up here. Very cool. And this shows how many villagers I've selected, and so you don't have to count the number. This is new. Barracks so, complete. Now you can create though. soldiers. Ooh, click the, the barracks, down here. then click yeah, the create well. militia button. Selecting different buildings or units oh. gives you different options in the lower left corner of the screen. I know. Thank you. <laughs> Kia. Very cool. I know last time I had a mod where there was an exclamation point above the heads of the idle villagers, which helped out a lot. Uh, let's see, I, I know I kind of like one militia unit. Not Create three that. more, and you will have enough soldiers to protect this area and win the scenario. Okay. If, if click that's... the barracks and quickly click the Create Militia button three more times to make three soldiers in a row. Okay. So you can queue, clue, queue militia. Very cool. What else can we do? Oh yeah, so if, if I have the hockey selected, they show at the bottom, and that's also new. That's very cool. Very, very useful. I haven't tried queuing up these things yet. I think we just need one more, right? Train four militia. So let's see, if I queue up the house... Now that you have a few soldiers, you'll be able to defend this like, area against English attacks. Too. Nice. And that should be it. Or are we gonna actually be attacked now? Okay. Alright, let's continue. Now that we have militias stationed across the border, the English have slowed their raids. But facing Longshank's army will be another matter. The wicked English king is yet to bring his famous longbows to bear. Our militias can only get us so far. We're going to need more advanced weapons. Also, you guys don't have to listen to me read <laughs> as much, which is nice for for my voice and probably for your you guys' ears. Okay, let's continue training the troops. Also, this kind of just shows what you have completed. All right, research and technology. Rumors creep in from the south of a giant who leads the forces of Scotland. His great sword driving through earth, man and horse alike. If this mythical knight can stall the English advance, it will give us time to develop the arms we need. Even now our smiths are forging swords and fletchers are crafting arrows and crossbow bolts. Actually, was there a narration in the original game? I think there actually was. I, I think I misspoke about that. To win, you'll need to advance the feudal age and repel the English raids. Your soldiers will automatically attack any enemy soldiers that are near them. Yep. Your scouts report your village is surrounded by force, but that does not mean it's safe. English soldiers have been roaming the countryside, plundering and raiding. Okay, so the English use very again. advanced weapons yeah. and armor. To yeah. win, cool. you will yeah. need to advance to the feudal age and repel the English raids. You're so going to need to research some technologies of your own like to the increase sheep. the strength of your civilization. Okay. A little too much. For example, Kid. researching Kid loom makes your villagers harder to kill. To research loom, click the town center, then click the research loom button. Good. Researching technology costs you resources, but improves your civilization. While researching, you can put your villagers to work and use your military units to explore. Kia. Kia. Oh shit, that's not what I wanted. So that's the problem with right-clicking the gears. <laughs> okay, looks like, so you, I believe that's new too. You can, 
advanced with feudal age. Okay. So you can actually queue up research and units at the same time. Which is nice. Right, let's put these guys on wood. And then we can scout with our militia. That's hockey. That's a lot of new shit. technologies and buildings become available when you advance to a new age. To advance from the Dark Age to the Feudal Age, you need 500 food. Okay. Should not be a problem. We have plenty of houses to support our, our cause. Okay, these guys will have plenty of sheep. Let's keep, let's keep scouting. So how do we... So we can follow, attack move, no attack stance. So if we... Now you have enough food to advance to the feudal age. However, you also need two buildings from your current age. Okay. You already have a barracks. Yeah, we do. So now have your villagers build a mill. The mill is a drop-off point for food. So build it next to your food source. In addition to gathering food at forage bushes, villagers can help sheep or hunt deer for food. Alright, we got we have lots of sheep. Here. Might as well put one on there. I like the mill. Very cool. Yeah, this game just looks really nice. Right? It's very nice to look at. Now you can advance from the Dark Age to the Feudal Age. Click your town center, then click the Advance to Feudal Age button. Good. You're on your way to the Feudal Age. Liking it. Alright, mill. Automatic. Oh, I heard about this. Automatic farm receding. So they'll automatically, if you have enough resources, build more farms, which is really nice. Tree reeds? I didn't know you could gather from two arms. The English are making a sneak attack. Not the English? What are their upgrades like? Oh, they're attacking a building. Which I don't really care about. I mean, they're stronger than my militia. We should be okay. Yeah, let's just right click. Oh, we lost one militia. We're gonna lose another. Oh, can, like, micro like this. Now that the battle is over, create some extra militia units at the barracks to replenish your forces. We'll do. Nice. It's just, I mean, the quality of life changes are really nice. It brings the game into the 21st century, and it kind of makes it a lot easier. Ooh, I like the donkeys. Or the donkey. But also the game, it looks similar to the old one. Just like, it's better graphics. <laughs> so it's really easy to pick up. It's not... I mean, there's quality life changes, but it's also pretty much the same game. Congratulations. Advancing to the next stage is the best way to improve your civilization. The idle villager button. Click it and locate villagers who are not currently assigned to a task. Now that you're in the feudal age, you can upgrade your militia to men at arms. Click the barracks, then click upgrade to men at arms. Okay, barracks. Men at arms. Upgrading to man at arms will change all your militia units to the more powerful men at arms. Let's make a... Yeah, this is new. Like, before you can only research. You couldn't research and create, like, queue up uh, units at the same time. Enough resources. And this is an easy way to look up... Um, like, how many villagers you have on each resource. The English are attacking again. Teach them a lesson with your new men at arms. Let's kill the cavalry unit first. Well, that... He died before you even got a swipe off. Yeah, the animations are well done. Nice. You guys get over there. I the English are no match for your warriors. That's right. <laughs> and I guess zooming out is a nice way to see your entire village. But ideally, you just want to leave it like that. Long Shanks has invaded. Stormed and sacked the city of Pearl. Worse, he has captured the fabled Stone of Scone and declared himself King of Scotland. If we cannot bring about a victory in battle soon, the Scottish armies will be too demoralized to put up any fight at all. If this mythical Scottish giant does exist, 
I wish that he would bring his forces up to Stirling, where we shall next do battle. Okay. So many units we lost. Zero? That doesn't seem right. <laughs> that, some, something is, is off there. Okay, how many more do we have? We have three more. Should we do one more? Or should we wait? Let's, let's wait. I think we can do the next three next time. And I think that'll this will be a good place to stop. Start, stop. Um, I think these were kind of like mostly introductory. And then we'll actually get into 5e next time. And like attacking uh, the enemy. Or the forces. Very, very cool. I appreciate you guys watching. And I mean, I have a long... There's a lot of campaigns here. I think there are three campaign scenarios added as well. So, also I noticed that all the historical battles are all in one place now. So we'll definitely give those a shot at some point. And then there's also this Art of War. Uncover the st strategic wisdom of Sun Tzu and practice your Age of Empires 2 skills in a series of short challenges. Each challenge you will strive to earn a medal and prove your worth to your friends and enemies. So what I might do is do those after the William Wallace campaign. This seems like a more advanced or it sounds like a more advanced tutorial. So we will give that a shot as well. But I appreciate you guys watching. Again, this has been Deltron, and I'll see you all in the next one. All right, bye guys.